Justin Trudeau and the Liberals are losing this election. I'm going to tell you how. I'm Candace Malcolm, and this is The Candace Malcolm Show. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Candace Malcolm Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. As you can see, I am live on location in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. Look at that. That is the North Shore behind me. You can see Stanley Park there and English Bay absolutely beautiful beautiful city and let me tell you this is a liberal stronghold the liberals typically win every single seat in Vancouver proper and I want to tell you a little bit about some of the conversations that I have been having here in Vancouver with friends with family if you've been tuning into our coverage on the Candace Malcolm show and here at True North you'll know that we hired an in-house pollster for this election campaign to help us make sense of the numbers to break down all those polls it can sometimes be confusing and to help us understand what demographics the various parties need to go after and need to capture in order to win so yesterday Hamish and I had this conversation one of the key key demographics that he did talk about that the Conservatives managed to win in 2011 that was part of their coalition that they haven't been able to win in, in the sub subsequent elections 2015-2019 is the demographic of women, basically my demographic. So I've got kids at home, women in their 30s, their 40s and even in their 50s with kids at home, sort of stay at home moms or working moms, but but that mom demographic is, is so important. Harper was able to capture that and like I said, Conservatives haven't that is sort of Trudeau's stronghold. Well, I want to tell you a little bit about some of the conversations that I have been having with people that I know here in Vancouver. So first of all, I'll tell you about one woman that was once a reliably and consistent liberal voter. She is again in my demographic. She's college educated. She has two kids. She's a stay at home mom. She voted for Trudeau in 2015, voted for Trudeau in 2019. She typically votes green in the provincial election, but having conversations with her during this trip, during this visit, I am floored by how anti-Trudeau she has been over the issue of the lockdowns. The lockdowns have caused absolutely devastating impacts on, on businesses, on families. The whole idea that the government can order people to stay at home and now order people to get vaccines regardless of you know what, whatever their personal views on it. Watching Trudeau play this divisive game, create these wedge issues, has really opened this my friend's eyes to how divisive the Liberals truly are, how basically just unhappy she is with the fact that she's voted for this government and how much she wants change to the point where she was talking to me the other day about a strategic vote. She, she likes Maxime Bernier. She likes the People's Party. She likes what she hears from them. Um, but she's so committed to voting Justin Trudeau out of office. She was asking me if she should strategically vote for the Conservatives in order to do that. Usually, folks, usually when we hear about the strategic vote, we're talking about parties on the left. So people that would typically be NDP or Green voters wanting to vote Liberal in order to keep the Conservatives out. But it's interesting to hear that coin flipped and someone who's so dead set on getting Trudeau out of office that she would be willing to vote for a Conservative. Now, again, I want to emphasize how much this person would have never struck me as a Conservative voter in the past. I would say her values are definitely on the left uh, when it comes to the environment, when it comes to just the basic issues um, that, that make up a voter. She's always been a voter on the left, but during this pandemic and the way that the Liberals have acted has brought her over to the right. She told me that the Liberals are not liberal, that they don't act like Liberals, they don't promote the values of freedom and rights, the whole idea of the Charter. They're not really the party that represent that anymore and it's interesting because for me, I've been saying that for, for years and years, and it's just so interesting to hear a person who was a longtime liberal voter say that again. Anecdotally, again, I have another person who is in the older demographic. This woman is retired, and she was also a longtime liberal voter. I know for a fact that she voted for Trudeau in 2015. And again, in 2019, I was uh, talking to this woman yesterday, and she told me that she has had enough, and this is a quote, of Justin Trudeau and his swarmy ways. She knows that there needs to be a change. She said that she likes her local Liberal candidate, but she can't bring herself to vote Liberal again. So if Liberals and Justin Trudeau are losing these demographics, women, college educated, both stay at home moms and retirees, these are the demographics that Trudeau really, really, really needs to win. And these are the demographics that he is losing. And we are seeing this in the polls. We are seeing this reflected. So, you know, these are anecdotal stories, but there are polls and there is data to back this up. And I think that is why you see a very, very desperate 
favorite, Justin Trudeau, out on the campaign trail. We've seen him making very vicious statements about anti-vaxxers, really pitting Canadians against each other, going with the whole we versus them attitude. I'm going to play you a clip right now of Trudeau looking incredibly desperate and playing the kind of divisive politics that he used to rally against, he used to cry against, he used to talk about how it was the Conservatives that pitted Canadians against each other, the Conservatives that dehumanized uh, people that they disagreed with. Well, watch the way that he is talking about Canadians who feel uncomfortable getting vaccinated. So the folks out there tonight shouting, the anti-vaxxers, they're wrong. They are wrong about how we get through this pandemic. And more than just being wrong, because everyone's entitled to their opinions, they are putting at risk their own kids, and they're putting at risk our kids as well. That's why we've been unequivocal. If you want to get on a plane or a train in the coming months, you're going to have to be fully vaccinated. So families uh, with their kids don't have to worry uh, that someone is going to be, put them in danger in the seat next to them or across the aisle. And we know that the way to get through this as well is to make sure that people can go into non-essential businesses and feel safe that they're not going to get uh, catch COVID from someone next to them. And that means we're going to work with provinces and territories who want to move forward on vaccination certifications, on vaccination passports, so that everyone can be safe. And what's more, the federal government has announced we're going to pay uh, for the development of those privileges that you get once you get vaccinated because everyone needs to get vaccinated and those people are putting us all at risk. And Aaron O'Toole is siding with them instead of with Canadians who did their part and stepped up. He's talking about personal choice. What about my choice to keep my kids safe? What about our choices to make sure we're getting through this pandemic as quickly as we can? That's the choice we've all made. Canadians have shown it in being there for each other. And I am not going to back down no matter how many of them show up to try and shout us down from what I know to be true, what science tells us, what Canadians have told me, which is people are willing to do their part to get through this pandemic, and that's what we will do together. So shame on you, Aaron O'Toole. Sunny ways. I mean, seriously, this is a prime minister who used to campaign on having a positive vision for Canada, being happy go lucky, and again, uniting Canadians. And just look at that. That doesn't look like a leader who is winning a campaign. That doesn't look like a prime minister who is uniting a country. That looks like a desperate man who knows that he is losing. And that's why we saw the Liberals push out their policy platform today to try to distract from the news cycle, distract from the fact that they allowed a candidate to run even though they have known sexual assault abuses, the fact that the whole wedge issue around the unvaccinated doesn't really hold up or the fact that Aaron O'Toole is actually kind of popular among Canadians. Canadians didn't really know very much about Aaron O'Toole. The assumption was that he wasn't going to be able to appeal to them but the polls are really reflecting that people like what they see in Aaron O'Toole. He seems like a moderate guy. He seems like a bit of a policy wonk, a bit of a nerd, a family-oriented man, a man that served in the military that that really loves his country and, and that's providing quite a contrast from Justin Trudeau. So it is really interesting to see this all play out. Again, and if Trudeau loses places like Vancouver, loses voters like the people that I was talking about today, he is in very, very big trouble. And I think that we could see a very surprising outcome on the September 20th election. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Candace Malcolm, and this is The Candace Malcolm Show.